the scientific method. If you wanted to go to Disneyland and didn't live in Anaheim, California, and had never been there and didn't know the way, but wanted to go so bad, how would you get there? Okay, probably by car, but what direction would you go? Which roads would you travel? Okay, some of you may have said, I'd Google it. Sure, that's one way. But say you don't have Google, and you don't have a smartphone, what do you do? Maybe you set a map. Well, that's what I would use. I'd use a road map and follow it, and with a little luck, arrive at Disneyland. There you go. I also might need a compass. Now, scientists are always curious about the world and how everything works and why it works. And they are interested in inventing new things and making things that have already been invented even better. While scientists are doing their work of discovery and experimenting, they use a kind of road map. It's called the scientific method. The scientific method is a series of steps to perform to figure things out, to get to the bottom of things, to discover the answers to the questions of what and why and how things work and to make them work better. Look at a light bulb, not an LED, but an incandescent light bulb, one that has a glowing filament. How do you think we got the light bulb? The light bulb was not invented by just one man. The development of the light bulb took many years and many experiments and many men all working the scientific method to invent one of the most important discoveries ever. Can you imagine what it would be like if we did not have the light bulb? We'd have nothing to wrap around the Christmas tree to make it glow through the night. And you would probably be tripping around in the dark if you didn't have a flashlight. And without the light bulb, you don't have a flashlight. The scientific method, when followed properly, can help you figure out the answers to some important questions. Let's look at the steps of the scientific method. Step number one is observation. If you're like a scientist, you are naturally curious about the world, aren't you? Maybe when you were younger, you were always asking adults questions like, why is the sky blue? What makes water freeze? What makes lightning? Why do my bicycle tires always go flat? What happens if I touch a hot stove? Hey, don't touch that. You'll burn your fingers. As you looked at the world around you and wondered about things, you were observing. Observation is the first step of the scientific method. Observation requires using one or more of the five senses. What are the five senses? Hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, and touching or feeling. And then asking the questions or questions, why or how. Asking yourself these questions will lead you to the second step of the scientific method. The second step in the scientific method is to form a hypothesis. An hypothesis is an educated guess or a statement. Usually, your statement will go something like this. If I do this, fill in the blank, then I believe this, fill in the blank, will happen. You may not come up with the correct answer at first. But making a guess is a good start. Your guess needs to be able to be tested by other people. Yes, testing. Testing your hypothesis now leads you to the next step in the scientific method, which is to experiment. Experimentation is the third step in the process of the scientific method. This is the fun part. Your experiment may fail and may not support your guess or your hypothesis, or Maybe it will. As you test your hypothesis through experiments, you will want to conduct your experiments carefully each time. If you don't get the desired response, you may have to slightly tweak or adjust one of the characteristics of your test. It takes great patience as you go through the experimental phase of the scientific method. Other people who want to test your guess or your hypothesis will need to conduct the experiment the exact same way. Regardless of the result of your experiment, it will lead you to a conclusion. Conclusion. The fourth step in the scientific method of discovery. Your conclusion may be that your experiment supported your hypothesis, which may lead to more questions. Or, your experiment did not support your guess, your hypothesis. In that case, you will need to conduct further experiments until you get a satisfactory answer. 
which may still lead to other observations as you continue your path of discovery through the scientific method. It's important to keep a notebook and keep a record of your findings as you follow the steps of the scientific method. Let's run through a simple exercise to see how using the scientific method can work. There are many areas in the U.S. where winters can be brutally cold. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. That's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And if it happens to rain, the water turns to ice and snow. That's great for sledding and boarding and skiing, but not so cool for drivers. And roads can be very treacherous and dangerous when they're icy and slick. You may have seen snow removal trucks shoveling snow and spreading salt or sand on the highway to melt the ice. There is your observation. Hmm, it looks like salt melts ice. But how much salt does it take to melt the ice? And how much salt does it take to prevent water from freezing? There is our step one, using the scientific method. Our observation. Now on to step two, the hypothesis. We are going to make a guess. This might be our guess. If I use just a little salt, then the ice will melt. This could be our hypothesis. Or maybe you've come up with one on your own. There, finished with step number two. What's step number three? Right, experiment. We are going to test our hypothesis. Our experiment must be carefully planned. It must be able to be accurately repeated and be able to perform by someone else. Maybe this could be your experiment. We could use a plastic cup or a plastic bowl or a paper plate. Why are we going to use plastic? Because glass breaks. Glass is dangerous, guys. I am going to use a paper plate and put in some regular tap water. Next, place your cup or bowl or paper plate of water in the freezer and give it time for the water to turn to ice. Remove the ice from the freezer and sprinkle a little sodium chloride, also known as salt, onto the ice and observe. See if the ice begins to melt. How much salt did you use? How thick is your ice? Whatever you do, you will have to keep precise notes. A lot of notes. There is no limit to the number of notes and explanation to give to your experiment. And now, what would you do next? Well, maybe you would return your container to the freezer and see if the salty water refreezes. You can run your experiment any number of ways. More water, less water. More salt, less salt. At the end of each experiment, you can come up with a new conclusion. See if your experiment can be repeated and determine if the salt is an effective way to melt ice. The point is to follow each step in the scientific method until you reach an answer, an acceptable conclusion. Back to the light bulb. Of the several men who took part in the development of the incandescent light bulb, Joseph Swan, Hiram Maxim, and Thomas Edison, it was Thomas Edison that developed a practical long-lasting bulb. Thomas Edison tried a thousand different ways to make an acceptable filament. When he was asked how it felt to fail so many times, Thomas Edison replied, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Now that's the attitude to have. All right then, go to it. Observe things, hypothesize, experiment, conclude, invent things. Make this world a better place. You are born to do it. Hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers.